the husband of a teacher killed in the attack, had a heart attack and died. I'm just scared. You know, I don't know if I'm going to get robbed one day or not, or mugged, or even killed or shot. I don't even take the train no more. I mean, what do I have to do to defend myself? CTA related crime is up 40% this year compared to last. It couldn't come at a worse time. Those types of statistics would gas nearly $6 a gallon. I'll never have my baby. Ever. I trapped inside and couldn't get out. What goes through your mind at this point? I'm heartbroken. This is, this is our family, this is our friends. And the perception is that things are out of control. And the Lord answered and said unto me, You are rightly astonished regarding the departure of man, but you have not judged well regarding the evils which befall those who sin. And as regards what you have said, that the righteous are carried off and the impious are prospered. And as regards what you have said, man knows not your judgment. On this account, hear, and I will speak to you, and hearken, and I will cause you to hear my words. Man would not rightly have understood my judgment unless he had accepted the law and I had instructed him in understanding. But now, because he transgressed wittingly, yea, just on this ground that he knows about it, he shall be tormented. The nation is still reeling tonight in the wake of yesterday's mass shooting targeting the most innocent of victims. 19 elementary school students and two of their teachers are dead after a gunman barricaded himself inside of a fourth grade classroom in Uvalde, Texas and opened fire. information just released from investigators tonight who say the shooter was wearing body armor, carrying a quote AR-15 style rifle and was immediately engaged outside the school, exchanging gunfire with the police officer before running in. Police would eventually kill him, but not before he unleashed round after round, killing at least 19 children. Tonight, hopeful parents still waiting to hear if their child is safe. We're waiting to see if she made it out, if she's, you know, just in the hospital, or if the worst case, you know, she didn't make it. In, in trying to comprehend what happened at Rob Elementary, sometimes it's just natural to compare one tragedy to another. It's sad that we've had so many tragedies and with so many similarities. A comparison to the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting obviously just became a part of the conversation. In that December 2012 shooting, a 20-year-old shot and killed 26 people. 20 were children. The attack started with the suspect killing his mother, and he committed suicide after killing the children. Dean, thank you very much. Uh, school districts uh, across the country, meantime, are stepping up security today. That includes more than 20 schools in Livermore. As Crown Force Rob Nesbitt reports, the police department there increased staffing today as parents continue to process what happened 24 hours ago. Livermore police say there was no known threat, but they still placed officers in every single school in the district to give staff, students, and parents an added sense of security. School drop-off Wednesday wasn't easy for parents like Rachel Urgis. I'm scared. All right, we are back, and we've already seen gas hit $5. We've seen it climb past $6, but now there is a gas station in the Bay Area that has a gallon of regular marked at over $7 a gallon. One person is dead and 18 others have become sick after an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease in the Bronx. An investigation is now focused on a cluster of cases in the High Bridge neighborhood and bordering communities. The health department reports four cooling towers in the area tested positive for a bacteria that causes Legionnaire's. The agency says eight people have been hospitalized so far. Tonight, the family of a college-bound graduate of Confluence Academy 
is searching for answers about the unsolved murder of their loved one. 18-year-old Jarvis Sweet was shot and killed in Ferguson last week. We begin this half hour with two teens facing the possibility of life in prison. Thank you for staying with us at 5. I'm Brian Abel. And I'm Glenda Lewis. The two teens were charged today with killing a 16-year-old boy and a 20-year-old man. The murders happened Saturday morning in White Lake Township. 7 Action News reporter Darren Cunningham is in Clarkson where the arraignment took place this morning. He spoke with the mother of one of the victims. A mother trying to make sense of what happened to her son believes jealousy and a need for control drove one of the suspect's actions. I'll never have my baby. Terrifying moments for six people trapped inside two businesses when the facade of a strip mall collapsed in Temple City. Firefighters rushed to clear the debris from a 50 foot section of that building to rescue them. Let's go live to John Finolio in Temple City with more John. Sure, Micah, that's right. Firefighters say this was an incredibly close call. Take a look at the damage just behind me here. This shopping plaza was busy with customers late this afternoon when the front of this structure partially collapsed, trapping six people inside. An 18 year old is behind bars this morning in connection to a killing in O'Fallon, Illinois, Sunday night. Nautica Young is charged with first degree murder in the fatal shooting of 20 year old Ivan Marshall. It happened in the parking lot behind the Bella Milano restaurant. The major case squad continues to investigate this murder. Anyone with information is encouraged to call Crime Stoppers at 866 371 tips. Locally, Fox 2's Kelly Hoskins is in Glendale with more on a home invasion that led to a school lockdown. Well, there were frightening moments here in the area today for North Glen Elementary School. As police say that an armed suspect was on the loose in the area, forcing school officials to put the school on lockdown. We want to go ahead and show you video. As investigators say, this began with a home invasion just a few blocks away. Now, police quickly arrested one suspect, but a second got away. Kern County hasn't seen a school shooting since 2013, but that hasn't stopped designers from upping security and wondering if it's enough to stop a killer. Standard Elementary in Oildale was designed with gunfire in mind. Here's a story that's new at 5 tonight. Take a look at these images just released tonight of a suspect wanted for setting a homeless man on fire. It happened on Lower Wabash in Chicago. Multiple reports say the victim is a well-known member of the city's homeless community. Tonight, Karen Jordan reports. Joseph Cromelis is a familiar face in downtown Chicago. Any given day, he could be seen roaming the area on foot, earning the nickname the walking man. But it was when he was resting that he was the apparent target of an attack. A police source saying someone doused Cromelis in flammable liquid and lit him on fire early this morning as he was lying on the ground at the intersection of Kinsey and Lower Wabash. Romelis was rushed to Northwestern Memorial Hospital, where he's in critical condition. Advocates for the homeless say living on the street can be dangerous. Investigators say overheated electrical cords caused a deadly fire that killed a toddler in the city's Rosa neighborhood. As WJN's Jewel Hillary reports, investigators say the apartment was cluttered with debris that made it difficult to get to the child. I woke up by my sleep and there was a lot of smoke. Once away, Jada Cherry, who lives in this apartment complex in the 110th block of South King Drive, rushed from her second floor apartment to help others safely escape the burning building. I finally got down the stairs calling 911 um, to ring all our doorbells and stuff to try to get everybody out. But by the time I made it, uh, two of the family members was coming out. Um, they said it was a baby in there. That child, a two year old little girl who firefighters tried to resuscitate, didn't survive. Now to the road to recovery in Gaylord. Widespread ruin and rubble still covering the city days after a deadly EF3 tornado roared through. Crews with FEMA are getting their first up close look at all the damage there. Two people died, dozens more injured on Friday. Today we're getting our first up close look at the sheer destruction caused by a tornado here at the Nottingham Mobile Home Park in Gaylord. All of this being surveyed by FEMA as they assess the damage. Touring the hard hit Nottingham Mobile Home Park, much of which is destroyed. Those taking part in a site survey looking to determine extent of the loss and how much assistance will be needed for Otsego County. Some people are just walking away, not even coming back. 
Angela Laslett surviving the deadly twister, but her home is now unlivable. She's also thinking of her neighbors whose homes were mangled by Mother Nature. I mean, mentally, physically, <laughs> exhausting. Kate Jones is sharing her own pain with us after the death of a friend and being released from the hospital for minor injuries. She's expressing sadness being felt by an entire community. What goes through your mind at this point? I'm heartbroken. This is, this is our family. This is our friends. Well Flames could be seen coming from a Bronx sewage treatment plant early this morning. Officials say a fire inside a manhole was fed by gas. The fire broke out around 2.30 a.m. at a facility in the Hunts Point section. It was brought under control just before 5. The cause of the fire is under investigation. To the deadly supermarket shooting in Buffalo, the retired hero police officer killed in the massacre was laid to rest yesterday and given a special honor. 55-year-old Aaron Salter was posthumously awarded the City Police Department's Medal of Honor and promoted to Lieutenant Salter was shot and killed as he tried to protect customers from the gunman. I believe that he would want me to say that on one of the darkest days in the history of Buffalo, he made a choice to stand tall. He gave all that he had for all that he believed in, protecting and saving lives. Buffalo officers have created a scholarship in Salter's honor while the community continues to bury its victims. 77-year-old Pearl Young was also laid to rest yesterday, and two more funerals are scheduled for tomorrow. The mother calling for justice for her son nearly two years later. Police say 19-year-old James Lepe was shot and killed in December of 2020. Now his mother says she wants to see charges filed in connection with his death. He was such a good boy. It's been a year and a half since Joanna Velez has seen her son, James Lepe. Every day I think about my son when I wake up, when I go to sleep. She calls him a gentle, respectful soul who had a bright future ahead of him that he never got to see through. Is a parent's worst nightmare. Police say the 19-year-old was shot in the chest and killed in December of 2020 during a confrontation with his sister's boyfriend at this apartment complex near Tropicana and Decatur. It's the worst thing that I'll ever go through and it will forever haunt me. A driver arrested up in North Las Vegas was more than three times over the legal alcohol limit. North Las Vegas police sharing these photos of the crash near Centennial and Low C. Police saying the driver in custody was speeding, driving on the wrong side of the road before the crash. Fortunately, only minor injuries were reported. According to police, a man got on the blue line stop here at Clinton. Sometime between Clinton and the LaSalle stop, he was stabbed. Yes, partner, this is Bonafide uh, for train conductor. He said that this happened at the Clinton Blue Line. Chicago police say a man was stabbed in the chest and came stumbling out of a Blue Line train at LaSalle and Ida B. Wells sometime after 1030 Monday night. Police now releasing these pictures of the suspect, the victim later dying at Stroger Hospital. It's concerning because, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get robbed one day or not or mugged or even killed or shot. Some developing news out of the North Bay now. A man shot by state parole officer in San Jose. That's what they're investigating. Yeah, this morning investigators are trying to piece together what led up to that officer having to actually use his gun. Mm -hmm. Camila Barco is live in the newsroom with more. Good morning, Camila. Yeah, Serena James, the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office says that they're still at the beginning stages of their investigation, but so far we know that paramedics rushed one person to the hospital after shots were fired. Well, this afternoon, we still have very few details about a shooting up in North Las Vegas. A police officer shot a man after a domestic dispute, but the department has offered little else at this moment. This happened near Shadow Creek Golf Course off Washburn and Losey. Bianca Holman has what we do know so far. Just after 1.30 Wednesday morning, North Las Vegas police responded to a domestic violence call that took place right here in this neighborhood near Washburn and Losey. Police received several calls. A man involved was armed and ran away from the house. When officers arrived, they made contact with the suspect. During that incident, the subject was fired upon. He did sustain a gunshot wound and was transported to UMC Hospital. So as for that, the person is alive. As for the officer, he is uninjured. Officers say the domestic violence victim is okay. Police tell us they plan to release more information about the incident within the next 72 hours. Bianca Holman, live, local, now.
Two years after the murder of George Floyd and the racial justice demonstrations across the country and here in New York, the NYPD takes steps to change the culture in the department. Mayor Adams tells CBS 2's political reporter Marsha Kramer it's a work in progress. Step one is weeding out bad apples. Adams says that since he took office on January 1st, 29 cops were forced out or resigned or retired with disciplinary charges pending. 116 have received formal discipline, and an unspecified number have been disciplined by their precinct commanders. But that's just the beginning. A mystery phone call, an ambush, was a cop set up to die. The crime scene has disappeared. From the FBI to the NYPD, accusations of a 50-year-old cold case Cover up. It was a conspiracy. A developing story in Staten Island. Police say a one-year-old child has died after being hit by an SUV. The little girl was with her mother, who is now hospitalized. The news Dave Carlin is live in the Rosebank section of Staten Island with more. Dave. Cindy and Mary, heartbreak in this neighborhood. The mother and child in the crosswalk over here for Scarborough Avenue at Abbott. And a car rounding a corner struck them. Well, the losses in Uvalde, a lot to bear. We've learned today the husband of a teacher killed in the attack had a heart attack and died. Ken Spies, Victoria De Leon has been in touch with the family, now grieving two losses. This morning, Joe Garcia reportedly suffered a heart attack after dropping off flowers at his wife's memorial. His wife, Irma Garcia, was one of the two teachers killed in Tuesday's mass shooting at Robb Elementary School. The husband of a teacher killed in the attack had a heart attack and died. I'm just scared. I don't even take the train no more. I mean, what do I have to do to defend myself? I'll never have my baby. Ever. I trapped inside, I couldn't get out. And the perception is that things are out of control. And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Thank you. 